Good afternoon everyone, Merch Hunter Ricky back, and today we're going to talk about One Piece Chapter 1088. Specifically, we're going to hone in on the Isle Isle Fruit user, Avalo Pizarro. See, the Corrupt King has had a bit of a resurgence, uh, not even a bit, a huge resurgence. He is now in control of the entirety of Hachinosu, and he's seemingly showing a little bit of uh, jealousy towards Blackbeard in 1087. and. It's understandable because we know from the scene with Aokiji earlier in a couple chapters before this that the Blackbeard Pirates aren't exactly friends. They are people with mutual goals and agendas that happen to line up with each other. Therefore, they teamed up as a crew to start wreaking havoc on the world. They want to let Blackbeard become Pirate King, but not all of them feel that like entirely as like an amazing, like, yes, let's do this. Um, when they were shown in the lava pool, for example, it was interesting, like that like little lava area they were in, because only Lafitte seemed to be like completely loyal to Blackbeard. So we can assume, you know, like Burgess, Van Auger, and Doc Q will be and Lafitte will be the most loyal members of the Blackbeard crew, but not necessarily the other guys. But why I'm honing in on Alvalo Pizarro right now is because his devil fruit just got exposed. This is surely an amazing devil fruit, yes. And we were all talking earlier when his devil fruit first got revealed, right? Like, oh, it's the same as Pika's. No, I'm here to tell you that Pika's devil fruit is actually much better than Avalo Pizarro's devil fruit. And the, f the main reason being is that Pika can free form and assimilate stone. However, if you cut the stone, you do not hurt Pika. But if you hurt the island, that Avalo Pizarro is currently controlling, like whatever part he's manipulating, whatever part of his body, the corresponding destruction to the environment corresponds also to his body as well. We've seen this trope before in Bleach with Sanjin Komamura, the captain of whatever division, I don't remember, but his Bankai was a giant samurai, and the samurai took damage, he took damage. I believe he got his arm cleaved off. And I don't really know how deaths work in Bleach, so, because they're already dead, right? But this is kind of important because like Hachinosu is going to be a huge player soon. Like Blackbeard is really, really, really ramping up all of his efforts. All of his main goals are seemingly aligning to becoming the forefront villain of the story right now. Even with the intimidating panels of Emu we got a couple chapters ago, I am still more worried about Blackbeard right now because of how he has his hands in everything. And his base, his home island right now, Pirate Island, is controlled entirely by Avalo Pizarro, not Blackbeard. And of course, you know, one can make the argument that Blackbeard can really rough up that island and, you know, cancel out Pizarro's powers. But Pizarro is the one right now showing that he has a little bit of contempt towards Blackbeard. So I wonder if down the line this is going to become an issue. But let's get into the explanation of his devil fruit powers without any further rambling. So he basically can control the island from a specific spot. Now we don't know if it, there's a spot that he has to be at, direct center or not, or if he just chose the skull head due to how amazingly you know intelligent using it is, or so we thought. Because now in 1088, we see that um, you know he he's controlling the skull of Hachinosu, right? And apparently it's representing his head because Garp hits his head and we see that that's where he took the damage. When he reached out the hand, we see further that that is where Garp, um, not Garp, but Kobe destroyed it and it really messed up uh, his arm. Pizarro is not doing good right now, but Something can be said and complimented for the Blackbeard Pirates is that they are all stupidly durable. I mean, we saw it in Marineford, but now we're seeing it again. Uh, Pizarro is back up and running at the end of the chapter, and he took, you know, quite some substantial damage in this chapter. I mean, he got he got ganged up on, not not literally ganged up on, but you know, he got double teamed by Kobe and Garp, and that's that's crazy that Garp hit him with a really strong named attack. And at the end of the chapter, he's glaring at Garp and not on the ground KO'd completely. That is, that's frightening, right? Um, it's not good for the Straw Hats. It's not good for anyone, really, that's going up against the Blackbeard Pirates. Because what's going to happen now is that Blackbeard is probably going to develop a trend of kidnapping and running back to Hachinosu. 
or you know starting battles and leading them back to pirate island because the importance here is that he has a devil fruit user that can change the terrain and control the island at will so as long as he and pizarro align with the same goals Hachinosu is going to be val uh, Blackbeard's most valuable tool. It's going to be so dangerous coming, uh, going forward in this campaign that when Pizarro makes a move on anyone in the island, unless they have Kobe-style hockey like we just saw, so, you know, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Jinbei, unless it's those four people or, you know, I guess whoever else decides to show up at Hachinosu at this point, they're in for a rough awakening because... The second that Pizarro reveals that he has hockey, it's over. It's not going to be easy to take him down because if you're doing hockey-coated island hand smacking something, I doubt, I doubt Kobe would have been able to pull off what he pulled off here. Clearly, he is not an armament user or maybe his devil fruit, you know, takes up so much stamina that he cannot expend any more on hockey coding or even observation hockey, right? because he technically doesn't even need observation hockey with this devil fruit so long as the conflict is taking place on his island. And you know, it begs the question, is he rooted on the island forever? Or is he just, you know, able to just pluck himself from Hachinosu and let's say he were to land on Drum Island. If he were to go to the castle, right? And stick himself in there, would he then control Drum Island? Or does it have to, like, can it be anywhere on an island? These are a couple questions that we need to know about Bizarro now. Anywhere on the island, does that work? Or do you have to be somewhere in the center? So, like, location activation is what I would call it, right? Then what we need to know, too, is what exactly counts as Pizarro's body? How so does it, does he do it? Like, is it always active? Because I don't think he took damage when Garp did Galaxy Impact, for example. Because if he was active in that area, I feel like things would have gotten out of hand and um, 1088 would not have gone down the way it did, right? Because Avalo Pizarro would already be taking, or have taken so much damage that I doubt he would have been able to sustain himself. But he didn't. And in 1088, we see, you know, he's using his head as the, the steering wheel, you could say, for basically making the island a mech, right? With the mech pilot housing being the skull of Hachinosu itself. And we've also seen this in a couple chapters before when it was first revealed what his fruit is. You know, he was kind of like assimilated into the ground on Hachinosu, like inside the skull. And he could feel people running around his peck, is what he said. I think it was like the right side. I could be wrong. But, you know, he said he felt people running on his chest. Now, if Garp had pulled off Galaxy Impact in that moment, that would have, I genuinely feel like Pizarro might have actually straight died. And... We can see that Oda is cooking with this fruit, but maybe he overlooked the fact that Pika never took damage from the stone being cut, right? Pika took damage from Zoro cutting him. When, you know, every time Pika was able to just leave whatever current stone form he was in, or, you know, cutting the stone around Pika didn't hurt him. And I feel like we can't, you know, accurately say this, but my assumption is that Pika's devil fruit was actually superior to the island fruit because what Pika can do is assimilate most likely on any island as long as there's a good enough amount of stone and I guess you could even say because I mean he was using dirt at one point like it wasn't just stone that he was using he was using straight up earth so there's a lot like even Pika's devil fruit raises questions right it at least Pizarro's does have a semblance of sense and it, it has like a you know like a rhyme to the reason i guess you could say as long as he is choosing what part of him is assimilated when and where then he will take damage in the corresponding region if it gets hurt but you know who can hurt people like who can hurt him is another question because who are they going to run into next who are the blackbeard pirates logically going to fight next the ones on hachinosu i'm not talking about the ones appearing on Egghead, and I'm not talking about Blackbeard himself yet because we don't know if he's left Winter Island yet or if he's already, you know, he could be a foot away from Hachinosu for all we know. But that's not the point of this video. What I'm basically wondering and talking about, like, why it bothers me and why it intrigues me so much, the, the fruit of Avalo Pizarro is because 
Like, what if someone were to take this to the, the theoretical one piece, this fruit in specific, would you be able to just like really, like depending on what the knowledge of the one piece is, or you know, what, what the physical one piece is, like if it's truly just the site where the ancient kingdom was, like it's, it's home island, that would be a little bit bananas, right? Because with Vegapunk telling us that his future is based off of the England, uh, the, the England, the ancient islands technology from 900 years ago, right? That, yeah, I think you see where I'm going. Pizarro taking control of that, or even worse, Pizarro taking control of Egghead Island. That would be wild, and it's a good thing he's on Hachinosu right now. So, you know, that's why that question needs to get answered. Can Pizarro freely assimilate with islands at will when he's touching it, obviously, or is he forever fused with Hachinosu now? Because those are some, you know, that's a really big one right there. How does he activate, you know, how does it how does it work exactly? Because when he was fully assimilated into Hachinosu, and he was talking about people running on his chest, would what exactly like indicates it other than the fact that he was like wooden seemingly, you know? Because what I want to know is like, can he just pick out anything to control from the island, or is like where he is like the determining anchor, and then from there he spreads? And another question to ask is how would he awaken this fruit if he's not already awakened? Because I'm not putting it past a Blackbeard pirate to not have already awakened the fruit just because of who they are. Remember, these people committed crimes so dangerous that they needed to be removed from history altogether in the bottom layer of Impel Down. Blackbeard walked in and said, you know, you guys can fight to the death and whoever wins, join my crew. And that's what happened. So it's not even like they wanted to join the crew. Blackbeard said, if you want freedom, this is how you're gonna get it. And then you'll be part of my crew. So, you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier in the video. Is Avalo Pizarro truly on the side of Blackbeard or will he be the thorn in Blackbeard's side? That's a question that I need answered soon. Um, mainly because if he, you know, he starts to show a little bit more loyalty towards Blackbeard, I guess I'll, that theory can die, but if he does show a little bit of mutiny, who would join him, right? Because another thing coming up is like, who's gonna get the credit for taking down Garp? This is a big deal because Avalo himself said, Blackbeard this, Blackbeard that, that's all you see in the news. Now you're gonna see the fourth captain of the Blackbeard Pirates, Avalo Pizarro, took down the legendary hero Garp and his young upstarts. That's insane to want to take the glory from your captain. It's not wrong, right? If he did do it, he would technically deserve praise, yes. But in a perfect world, you should just really like give it all up to your captain. That way you can be kind of like a little bit less on the radar of the world government. And obviously he doesn't give a shit about that, right? And that's fine. But it just begs the question, like, can he potentially mutiny Blackbeard? How will Blackbeard fall? Will he just get his ass whooped by Luffy? Will he, you know, get taken? Like, he reminds me of Rox, right? And Rox did go down at God Valley, but we don't know how he went down, right? He could have pissed off Whitebeard. He could have pissed off Kaido and Big Mom at the same time, and they could have turned around and been like, Garp, Roger, the five of us are gonna F up Rox right now. We don't know what kind of devil fruit Rox had. We don't know if he even had a devil fruit. We don't know what his hockey level was, but obviously it's something very strong for Kaido to have him in his top five, right? Not only that, but obviously Conqueror's observation, armament, he had all three, he had to have. So, you know, depending on what kind of weapon rocks used, depending on what kind of devil fruit he might've used in tandem with his weapon of choice, because, you know, evil pirates don't play around. We've seen it with Katakuri, we've seen it with Doflamingo, we've seen it with Kaido, we've seen it with Big Mom. Devil Fruit Power, check. Hockey of all three types, check. A weapon. Why is the weapon important? Because if you catch your enemy slipping, not armament up like Luffy was, look what Katakuri did, stab him clean through the stomach. That's dangerous, that's smart though, because you can't just rely on hockey and Devil Fruits at all times, and one day your fist might not be enough. Look at Garp now. You know, what's to say if Garp didn't have like an emergency sidearm, if he caught, 
he caught Kuzan off guard in 1088, right? He ran up to him and decked him into the floor. What if he caught Kuzan slipping right after that still, decked him into the floor, and then shot him in the head? Stabbed him through the chest. We'd be at one Kuzan, no? Right? The arsenal of an evil pirate makes entirely too much sense. They always seem to have a devil fruit. They always have the hockey requirements, all three, and they always pack some heat with them. Big Mom, you know, Napoleon, Raijin is based off Napoleon. The reason why I always choose Raijin, like why I like him so much, he's a four foot long sword, um, is because Napoleon is my favorite weapon in One Piece because it is a devil fruit infused weapon, you know? We've seen this again now with Nami and Zeus, which I'm making a video about that pretty soon here. Um, this is important to me. The, the ability to have your weapon in tandem with your hockey and your devil fruit, that's to me what, what distinguishes a top tier fighter. Look at Roger. Roger was over here, uh, you know, conquerors coating his sword left and right. He had no devil fruit. He did not need one. That's how good his hockey was. Look at Whitebeard. Whitebeard sure had the Gura Gura, he had that earthquake, but also he was really handy with that uh, uh, halberd. He was not messing around. That scene is burned into my head in Marineford, both manga and anime, where he just like scrapes the ground with the, the halberd and like Marines are just flying left and right in the air on either side of the blade's path. It's, it's a true sight to behold. It is so hype inducing. I mean, Big Mom and her devil fruit and her weapon in tandem with one another. I've never, I, like, you know, she clashed with Kaido and it was a sky splitting clash. So, you know, let's throw it up some respect to Napoleon because it literally has not broken yet. Like the weapon doesn't complain about getting thwacked. That's so powerful. And what also worries me is like, what happens if Pizarro controls like a cannon? I know I went on a bit of a tangent there, but it, it meant something. If Pizarro learns hockey, and gets some like weapon inclinations too. What, you know, we'll see more of like a Capone Gang Beach style devil fruit coming out of him now where he'll have the Hachinosu skull loaded up with cannons and he'll be in control of each cannon. So he can really, really pull some crazy aiming maneuvers off. And no, this isn't to set him up with Usopp or anything like that. But, you know, it's just saying like, his devil fruit is so powerful and we've seen what powerful pirates do Blackbeard has a true gem on his crew. Pizarro is a dangerous, dangerous-minded individual to already be talking against Blackbeard like that, you know? He wants glory for himself. He does not need Blackbeard hogging at all. What happens if Blackbeard becomes close to getting the One Piece, right? What if he just reveals, yeah, with my fight with Law and what I've been doing in the background, I have three of the four road poneglyphs, and I found the man with the black sails, the man with the burn scar. If Blackbeard finds him first, my heart's gonna be thumping through my chest until we understand like the end of that scenario, right? That That's a really, really nightmare scenario. Pizarro's Devil Fruit blows my mind. I'm a huge fan of it. I've had a lot of fun talking about it. I hope you guys understand where I was coming from with this video. I know it was a little impromptu and a little off the walls at some points, but the point of the video is Alvala Pizarro's got a dangerous Devil Fruit and it freaks me out. It's not, I personally don't think it's better than Pika's, personally, but I want to hear your comments below. Like, do you think it is better than Pika's or do you think that his uh, Pika is inferior for different reasons while being okay for not taking the damage that Pizarro would take? These are questions, you know? So I've had a lot of fun talking about this. My name is Merch Hunter Ricky. Have a good afternoon, everyone.